Uh, thank you. Sorry, we just have a, if you working in the virtual world, we have a, we, we put up the shades so we can do some things in the background <laughs> just to get everything back on track. Um, just a reminder again, you can ask questions through the chat. If you're free, fresh your screen. If you're not seeing the chat option uh, down the bottom, and if you just pop it out into a separate window, you can ask questions through there. Uh, we'll try and get some at the end of this discussion, but also at the panel at the end where we're talking about telehealth in general. So I'd, I'd like to hand it over to Josh and Graham, and thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, it's really, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, Graham and I are both really, really stoked to be asked to um, to come and present today uh, about something that is so important um, and so stigmatized by society. So um, we've got um, a little bit of a demonstration. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk about um, the sort of uh, the patient view of the service. Uh, and then Graham's going to talk a little bit, about, which is just a general overview of what TEND is and how it works, because I think lots of you probably haven't seen it. And then I'm going to hand over to Graham and he can talk about some of the clinical aspects of um, how we're delivering uh, kind of care for our patients that would like PrEP or are using PrEP um, as part of kind of TEN's overall primary care service. So uh, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay, and we'll just uh, get that sorted out now. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Um, so what, what TEND is, is TEND was started by um, a bunch of people that have a really broad array of experience. On the one hand, we've got James and Cecilia Robinson, who have spent their kind of careers building consumer products. Um, they built my food bag, and before my food bag, they also built another consumer product, which is around providing um, childcare services. Uh, my background is as a technologist. I've been building kind of software products for 20 years. Um, and then we also have um, some wonderful clinicians. So the other co-founder is Dr. Mataroria Linden, who's a public health doctor and um, medical educator. Um, and then Graham, our chief medical officer, joined us um, kind of about a year in. Um, and we really, really want to try and um, change the way that New Zealand consumers interact with healthcare. When we think and look at what's happening internationally, um, there's been some significant changes in technology over the last 20 years uh, in terms of you know, consumers' expectations of where technology is going to interact with their lives and what it's going to look like. Um, Teresa Getting, who's one of our investors and the chair of our board, made this comment a couple of weeks ago in a meeting that I was in where she said when she was the CEO of telecom back in the day and the internet became a thing, they really thought that, that the internet was going to be really transformational for healthcare. But what's happened is it's changed dating, but it hasn't really changed healthcare yet. Um, but we we fundamentally believe that the, that the way that you interact with your um, healthcare team and with your healthcare services is going to be digitized and is being digitized at the moment. It's just being done, if I can be quite frank, really badly. Um, lots of the existing products and services in New Zealand are designed around um, clinicians' needs, which is really, really important, and I don't want to in any way discount that, but they're not designed for consumers. And so, unfortunately, consumers have got access to products that really are designed around them and are designed to sort of um, play with their serotonin loops and, and other things. So, like, Instagram is an incredible product. It drives you back in there every day. It is incredibly carefully and thoughtfully designed. There is a huge amount of money that's been spent on making that a really simple and beautiful experience. But when you look at um, kind of patient portals, you don't find the same level of care and attention to detail and polish. And part of the reason for that is um, that there's a need to get a cross-functional group of people to build those. Part of that is that um, it's really, really expensive and takes a lot of money and takes some really expensive and experienced people to be able to build really high quality consumer products. And so TEN's mission is to try and bring together all of those people in one organization. So we don't have a contracted service provider that's building our our app, that's a team that works inside TEND, right alongside our doctors and our nurses and our pharmacists and our operational people and our practice management and everything else. So we're a full service primary care service. We employ our own physicians, we employ our own nurses, but we also employ software developers and product managers and user experience experts to try and build something that's really, really simple and easy to use. Um, so I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. Um, the TEND app is kind of our equivalent of a patient portal. Um, and so the home page of that or the front page of that is just a really simple call to action, which is book an appointment. Um, what, what we did is we did a lot of uh, research at the start of TEND. We did um, a couple of Colmar Brunton surveys of health consumers in New Zealand. And what we found was that 
despite the fact that if you look internationally, there's there's lots of different models now of interacting with with healthcare within New Zealand. Consumers still really think about booking an appointment with a doctor and going to see the doctor as the start of a healthcare journey. So we really wanted to speak to consumers kind of trained desire and give them a really simple way to do that. There was very what, low awareness before COVID. We started um, about a year before COVID um, of telehealth in New Zealand. And it's still not particularly well regarded if you talk to consumers. It's kind of seen as a sort of second class um, experience. People can't wait to get back in front of their doctors again a lot of the time because they're not having a great experience. And part of that is just because the technology that they have access to is not particularly um, user friendly. So we've put this decision um, in front of consumers. So they get to choose, would you like to see your doctor online or would you like to see them in person? Um, and then they can kind of go through a really simple booking process, tells them how much your appointment's going to be. Um, we ask them to describe what they need. Um, and this is really great because this is a, a huge deal for people that are raising sensitive issues. Um, to be able to sort of write down <laughs> um, not anonymously, because you're obviously not anonymous, you're fully identified as a, as a 10 user, but to be able to write down, hey, this is what I need, so that the doctor is aware before you even come into the consult of what you're talking to them about, makes a big deal for the clinician. It means they can prepare if you have a specific need or they can do some research, but it also means you've kind of broken the ice on what the issue is. And if it's an intimate issue or an embarrassing issue um, or, or one that you're sensitive about, then kind of being able to do that somewhat disintermediated from the human being that you're interacting with is actually a really powerful first step in terms of sort of breaking some of the stigma and shame of, of some of those presentations. And we see a really broad range um, in our practice. Uh, of conditions that would not normally present in primary care. Um, Graham tells a story that I love of um, a teenager booking an, an appointment who was concerned about his gaming addiction. And like, that's just not a person that would ever set foot inside a, um, a normal general practice to talk about that in the normal context. But because they were able to do that safely and securely in a video call from in front of their computer where they were playing games, um, it really sort of lowered the barriers to overcoming your own sense of awkwardness or shame or self-awareness or whatever it is um, and being able to sort of start a conversation about how to get help and so we're kind of seeing that across the board um, lots of different things that wouldn't normally necessarily be surfaced in primary care are becoming uh, parts of the conversation with our clinicians because there's a safe easy way of getting access to them um, without the barriers of having to sort of you know call a medical center wait on hold book an appointment drive their transport etc um, we ask people uh, if they want to, to attach photos of conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then eventually when your appointment comes up, you get a nice rich push notification from us um, asking you to make, just confirm you're available, you check in, your phone will ring just like a FaceTime call and you'll be on the phone with one of our clinicians. I'll do a normal telehealth consult. Um, and then after that consult, uh, we'll survey you and ask you how you found the experience. So we ask you to rate it. We ask you to tell us whether or not you're con condition or concern was addressed today um, and any other comments and overall about 95 to 96 percent of people tell us self-reported but their concern was addressed and about 95 percent of people say that they had a smiley face experience and about sort of two percent say they had a sad experience and the rest are sort of a neutral experience which is about what we'd expect not everyone gets what they want out of a doctor's visit not everything that you want from a doctor is necessarily possible and um, there are things that are clinically unsafe or require additional kind of screening or qualification and that's one of the things we're here to talk about today and then the other thing that happens is after your appointment we send you the notes of your appointment so you get um two things you get the full notes of your appointment as your doctor recorded in your medical record um, and hopefully written in a way that is comprehensible to you as a non-trained doctor. Um, but also we start a, a secure online messaging chat with you. And this is really starting to teach people that you can interact with your primary care service in a non-linear way through secure messaging with your care provider or your care providing team. So that's doctor, the doctors and nurses that work for us. And this is fantastic, both from a patient perspective in terms of being able to go back and clarify things, but also from a clinical perspective in terms of being able to follow up and check in on how people are doing, if there's um, uh, high risk presentations or whatever. The other wonderful thing is that we have um, a two way channel with our customers. So we can send them messages and we can send them communication. So. If you've requested a script, for example, and we don't have the pharmacy that you want that delivered to, we can send you um, a rich message that says, hey, can you let us know which pharmacy you want this 
uh, delivered to and you can go through and, and set a pharmacy. Likewise, we can kind of send you medication reminders. Um, when we know a script is running out, if you need a refill, we can kind of start to be proactive about some of that stuff. So I'm going to kick back to Graham and he can talk a little bit about how we're using this infrastructure and this technology platform uh, to actually deal with handling the, the hoops that the system has put in place for prep. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Um, do you want to pop up that first slide, Josh? Have you got that there? Great. Um, so I hope you, that um, that gives you sort of a, a sense of how the, the technology um, um, can be a real enabler and, and kind of lower the lower the you know the barriers to access. Um, but I just also wanted to make um, mention of the fact that. Um, the other really strong thread that we have running through what we do is around the, the people, um, the people aspects and the cultural aspects of TEND um, in terms of our clinicians. So um, having amazing technology developed by um, Josh's team um, is fantastic, but, um, but that is going to be kind of meaningless if we don't have clinicians who, you know, understand how to prescribe prep um who are willing to promote it who know how to talk to the community um etc so um, um this is just a statement from our um, um you know from our uh kind of values document um, which i think kind of en encapsulates that concept so um you know our expectation is um that you know our clinicians will all be um trained on how to prescribe prep and and also um you know that that um, we have a culture that really supports, um, you know, really supports it um, and means that we have clinicians who are accessible. So the technology helps, but um, obviously the humans have got to be, um, they've got to be, um, uh, you know, um, the right, the right, you know, have the right frame of mind. Um, so do you want to move on to the next slide, Josh? So this is, um, I just wanted, I'll just, I'll keep this for really quick, but just talk about, I guess, what, what we're doing now, um, but then also um, where I really see it going with respect specifically to us supporting prep prescribing. So this is kind of our current our current workflow, and it's probably um, pretty similar to um, you know to anyone else who uh, is running a service that's offering video consultations. So if we have a patient who comes to us who's seeking prep, um, they will book in. Um, they can have a video have a video consultation with the um, with the doctor and go through the um, you know um, working out whether a prep is appropriate for them, um, and also satisfying the um, uh, satisfying the funding criteria, you know, lab labs labs are ordered and reviewed, um, and then um, uh, special authorities applied for, and we message the patient and we send through the prescription. And three months three months rolls around, we can proactively um, uh, reach out to those patients, establish whether um, prep is still um, right for them, have another video consultation, and so the cycle so the cycle continues. Um, so that's um, it's great in a lot of respects in that, um, as Josh talked about, I think the technology and being able to engage with us so easily um, from the comfort of your own home by, by picking up your phone already um, is a significant, um, you know, significantly lowering the barrier. Um, and particularly if you start to think about, um, you know, once we get to a point where we're a national service and um, the impact that that could have, uh, particularly in um, rural and remote regions, um, that's already pretty powerful. But um, moving on to the next slide, Josh. Um, the thing that really I think gets us more excited is thinking about how this could look um, a bit down the track. Um, and um, for example, and I was really impressed actually to see on the Body Positive website, you know, there's that little, um, that little survey um, that runs, um, you know, is prep right for you? If you think about um, that kind of approach um, using the technology, if we're able to um, present through a um, identifying and triaging people into um, into the right pathway. So if we've got a patient who um, is interested in starting prep or is recommended to start prep, um, we can collect um, 
data for them, allow them to engage with us through either a, a, a survey or through messaging with our clinical team or a combination of both, in addition to using the data that we already know about them and to, um, um, that we've collected when they sign up to TEND, to actually um, really um, crack that eligibility assessment piece um, before we even see the patient, um, which really sort of disintermediates that, for want of a better word, that, that sort of awkward conversation. Um, and then if once we've established that a person, um, you know, that PrEP is a good fit for them, it then means that when we have a video consultation with them, it really changes the emphasis of that conversation. So rather than it being that process of um, um, discovery and a discussion about whether PrEP's appropriate and also dealing with some of those questions that are forced on us by the special authority conditions that are, that are invasive and awkward, that piece can effectively be done and it really changes the nature of that consultation into one that is more about um, an information giving se um, session, um, which is, I think, not, not only um, less challenging um, from a from the perspective of patients engaging with uh, engaging with that conversation but I think also um, has the real potential to um, to uh, have a real impact in terms of increasing compliance and having you know meaningful discussions around risk behavior and um, uh, you know it becomes a much more um, uh, positive uh, kind of interaction because you've already dealt with that um, eligibility piece beforehand. And then um, you can see in the bottom line, once we run around that cycle, I mean, there is potential, um, uh, um, all other things being equal for um, the uh, renewal of PrEP to, to, to be done um, through messaging um, without there even necessarily needing to be a video consultation. Um, I mean, that would always be down to a matter of clin clinical judgment and it's going to depend on another, you know, on a number of other factors, including whether the patient is not enrolled and, and has other health issues going on. But, um, but we'll really simplify that process um, and um, potentially make the whole thing a whole lot uh, more seamless and less painful um, and more easily accessible for patients. And so that was that was really all we wanted to say, and I think that's pretty much pretty much our time. So very happy to um, to answer some questions either now or in the Q and A session when we um, when we get to it. Thank you for that presentation. I think that's really informative. Um, just in terms of your so you're uh, predominantly Auckland focused in terms of your service at the moment. Yeah, so uh, presently we are. So um, um, how, how long have we been going? Just coming up on 12 months, eh, Josh? Yeah, just coming up on 12 months. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that was a very much an intentional decision. I mean, we are, um, wanted to launch as a full service primary healthcare service. So that, that means, so we have our clinic in Kingsland. Um, we've got um, more, more clinics coming um, and um, so as part of that strategy and I guess you know learning um, how to deliver care as well through you know um, through our service and um, we didn't want to run too fast too soon um, absolutely our intention is to is to um, have national reach in due course but it's just a matter of making sure that we're um, uh, you know in the right place to do that at the right time okay I know if you want to add anything to that Josh just, I think that addresses um, Suzanne's question about how we manage recording blood pressure and BMI is that mm. we, we do have physical uh, sites that we can see you in where necessary to take um, measurements and other yeah. things that can't be done virtually. Okay. Um, and just one of the other questions through the chat was, because um, it's a, like a patient portal when you sign up for attend as, a, as an enrolled patient, um, can I see my medical history and my labs and stuff like that through that portal? Is that kind of the functionality that's available to me? That is absolutely the intention. Um, so at the moment, you'll be able to see all of your results from TEND, your, your previous medical history um, from previous providers. We are working to make that available to you as well. I, like our, we strongly, strongly believe that that your medical records are your medical records, not your doctor's medical records. And so, you know, we, we really want to make all of that information available to you so that you can kind of take control of your own healthcare decisions to some extent um, and, and really work in partnership with 
with the clinicians that are helping you with with whatever aspects of your life you need help with. So, yep. And the question about can you request repeats? Absolutely. There's a really beautiful, simple place in the app to um, start requesting a repeat. Obviously, there's some clinical judgment required for repeats, depending on exactly what it is, but, but you absolutely start the request process in the app and it's pretty streamlined. That's awesome. I think I think it's a like I mentioned. I think your app is very impressive in terms of its functionality and its usability. And I think the move towards uh, patient-centered healthcare is really really important to meet people yep. where they are. And the concept of triaging and making that easier to have those difficult conversations just to break the ice, so you can actually have yep. those conversations. I think is a really important. So I, I think that's the beauty of the online space. Um, so thank you for presenting that kind of information to us.